In this video, we will show you how to replace your ignition distributor rotor on this Chevy Silverado with a 4.3 liter engine. This will be located along the top rear of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. Locate the air inlet tube. We're going to loosen this clamp. You can either use an 8 millimeter or a flathead screwdriver. Just give this a little wiggle, slide it out of place. A quick inspection, make sure it is still soft and pliable. We'll set it aside. With that dislodged, we can remove our breather hose. Quick inspection, make sure it's soft and pliable. In the center of this area, you'll find that you have a small twist knob. Turn that counterclockwise. Take hold of this. We're going to lift it up and remove it from the vehicle. Now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we'll do is cover our throttle body port. We don't want anything falling inside the engine. Now we can move rearward from here. You're going to find a large wiring harness. It has three connectors holding it in place. Use a small pick or screwdriver to dislodge these. There's one. There's that one. Now this one's on the other side of this AC line. It's the same thing, just pop it free. There we are. Now we can maneuver this around as needed. Let's have a look along the back side here. Looking back here, you're going to find your distributor cap. On the distributor cap, you'll find that you have seven ignition wires, four along the passenger side, and three along the driver's side. Before you start removing any of these wires, it's important to make sure that you mark them. We could just use a marker for this if needed. You can also put some tape on them and mark that. The markings themselves, you just have to know exactly where they go. So along the passenger side here, I'll just go down the line. One, I'll make two lines on this next one. Three lines moving forward. Four for the one that's closest to me. Now let's do the same exact thing over on the driver's side there. We only have three wires here. Once you have each one of the wires clearly marked, continue on to removing them from the distributor cap. To remove the ignition wires, go ahead and take hold of them. You can give them a little twist to break them free, slide them out of place. Give them a quick inspection for corrosion. That looks fine. Let's continue down the line. With each one of those wires removed, we can continue on to that cap. For the cap, you'll find that it's held in place with two T15 Torx screws. One along the front and one on the opposite side towards the rear. A quick inspection and we'll set this aside. With that cap out of the way, we have a clear view of our distributor rotor. Now looking at this rotor, we can see that we have two T15 torque screws holding it in place. Go ahead and remove the pair. Go ahead and take hold of that, slide it out of place. There it is, friend. Okay, let's get ready to install our distributor rotor. Before we do so, let's have a look along the back side here. On the back side, you'll find that you have two bolt holes, and of course, next to each one of those bolt holes, you're going to have a small locating tab. Now let's have a look at the front side here. We're going to have the area where the electrode's located. Make sure you have that tab aligned with the square out notch on the reluctor wheel. 
We'll carefully press this down into the proper position, aligning those alignment tabs. Start in each of those mounting bolts and then torque those to 18 inch pounds. There are little mounting bolts here. Okay, that's bottomed out. Let's go over here. Let's torque these to 18 inch pounds. Double check to make sure that's completely secured in place. When you slide it down, make sure it feels as though it's completely seated. If it's off kilter even a little bit, moisture could make its way inside and that's going to cause a major issue. Once you feel as though you have it in position, continue on with your two T15 torque screws. Start them in, snug them up, torque them to 21 inch pounds. Okay, that one started in. Do the same to the other mounting bolt. On the bottom out, we'll pause there, make our way to the rear bolt. Let's torque these to that 21 inch pounds. Double check to make sure you're secured in place. Let's continue on with our wires. As you remember, when we took off each of the wires, we had marked them. Make sure you put them back in the same exact position. When you're putting them in place, it's a good idea to use a little bit of silicone paste. You don't need very much, just enough to lubricate it and keep moisture out of the area. Slide it in, listen for a click, give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. If it slides right off, it's not secured and you're going to have a running condition. Oh, I've got wire three here, don't mix that up. At this point, you know exactly what to do. We're going to make our way over towards the passenger side and reconnect each one of those wires. Once again, we're making sure we have them in the proper order and lubricating them. All right, let's check them all. Now that we've confirmed each one of those wires is tight, let's continue with the wiring harness. This had three mounting points. Once you have it in the rested position, go ahead and lock it down. Let's make our way back to the throttle body. Remove the rag, confirm nothing has fallen inside of the throttle body. This is extremely important. You don't want anything falling inside of your engine. It could be catastrophic. Let's get this in place. Along the front here, you will have this small hooked area. That will fit along the forward side of your throttle body. In the center of this area, you will have a mounting stud for this not to go onto. We'll just go ahead and start it on and snug it up. Double check to make sure this is nice and tight so no dirty or unmetered air makes its way inside the engine. Along the back side here, you will have that one breather tube. Go ahead and slide that into position. Make sure it's secured as well. If you need a wire tie, go ahead and use one. Time for the air inlet.
Make sure you tighten your clamp. Have the clamp aligned. Use your eight millimeter. Double check to make sure it's completely secured. Okay friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, you wanna go ahead and hop in the passenger compartment, start up your vehicle, let it run for a little while. Make sure you have no check engine light and no running condition, close the hood, and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.